It's such a beautiful uh, snowy morning that I thought I would read to you a little bit about colonial winters as seen from the eyes of Peter Kalm. Peter Kalm was a, uh, a Swedish man who did a, sort of a survey uh, of North America. He came in about, uh, I think it was 1749 or so, and he stayed a year or uh, actually probably a little bit more than a year, and he wrote about his uh, adventures and um, about the flora and fauna and the people of North America that he ran into. So it's an excellent book for understanding because you get to hear about what uh, colonial America was like from the eyes of somebody else, um, from an outsider. I believe uh, this is um, January 21st. I believe he's in Raccoon, uh, New Jersey. And here he's writing, the cold now equaled that of Sweden, though this country is so much more southerly. The Celsius or Swedish thermometer this morning is showing 22 degrees. And then he says seven and three quarter degrees below zero Fahrenheit, um, below the freezing point. Uh, As the rooms here are without any shutters, the cracks in the walls without moss, and sometimes there's no fireplace or chimney in the rooms, the winters here must be very disagreeable to one who's used to our warm Swedish winter rooms. Uh, But the greatest comfort here is that the cold is of very short duration. Some of the days of the month in which the room I lodge was such that I could not write two lines before the ink uh, froze in my pen, and when I did not write, I could not leave the inkstand on the table, but was forced to put it on the hearth or in my pocket. Yet, notwithstanding, it was so cold as appears from uh, meteorological observations at the end of this work. So he writes down later on, sort of a day-to-day, what the temperature was. Um, And though it snowed sometimes for several days and nights, and the snow lay near six inches high upon the ground, yet all the cattle were obliged to stay day and night in the fields during the winter. Uh, And then he goes on to explain how the English and the Swedes didn't build barns for their cattle. And so the cattle just had to stand out in the fields in the winter time. Uh, but the, the Dutch and the Germans did have barns and they kept their cattle inside. Snow lay yet in several parts of the woods, especially where the trees stood not very thick and the sun could not make its way. However, it was not above four inches deep. All along the road was ice, especially in the woods. And therefore it was very difficult to ride horses, which were not sharp toed. So I'm not sure what he means. Maybe they had spikes on their uh, shoes or something. Um, The people here, uh, the people who settled here know little of sledges, but ride on horseback to church in the winter, though the snow is sometimes near a foot deep. Uh, It lays seldom above a week before it melts, and then some fresh snow falls. So he writes there um, about snow specifically and traveling in the snow. And later on here, the next winter... Um, I think he's in the Philadelphia area. Uh, He's writing about January 9th, 1750. He says, The Delaware River is now frozen in most places in Philadelphia. For the last three days, there's been a large number of young men and boys on the ice, some walking, but most of them skating. There was still an open place here and there in the middle of the river. Doesn't sound very safe. Nevertheless, today at 11, I saw a man successfully driving a horse and sleigh on the ice directly in front of the city. The next day was mild and beautiful when a section of the ice before the town suddenly broke up and began to move downstream. There were a good many people on this piece of ice. Uh, Booths had been set up to sell brandy and such things to the skaters, and now they all found something else to do besides uh, enjoying themselves. (laughs) People rushed away precipitously and fortunately all reached terra firma safely, at least that we know of. The ice remained, but for a few days no one dared go out on it. There were some people on the other side of the river starting to cross when the ice began to loosen, but they were obliged to turn back. Smart folks. On the 13th of this month, the river wholly opened up again so that ships could move in and out. And then he goes on and he says, The English youth is very fond of skating, and so are the men of 30 years or over. Men of all classes have a passion for this sport. They would sometimes go three or four miles to reach a place where the ice was safe. The sheltered spots were flooded with men skaters, but I saw no women on the ice. He also goes in uh, during the winter time. He kind of stays inside. um, Smart guy. 
and but he actually goes through old newspapers and he transfers some of those interesting stories into his journal and many of them reference uh, kind of the snow in different parts of um, of the the history so like he he goes back into a newspaper in 1725 and it talks about how there was a whole lot of snow nearly two feet then there hasn't been uh, that much snow in the past couple of years and he goes on and and talks about <clears throat> snow and and winter at several times in the book so it's a really it's, it's well as you can see there's a lot to this book um, you can see my notes I uh, have a there's so many interesting little tidbits in this book sometimes just a sentence or two but very very insightful at times um, answering questions you have about daily life or about the differences between people that were living in the colonies it's a book I just can't recommend enough uh, it's a it's a great book there are some printed versions available online uh, you can go to Amazon I'll probably put a link down in the description section uh, there's also the a free PDF version of uh, Peter Kalm's book that you can find. This one is the like uh, 1770 English translation. I think there's also a 1771 English translation. So uh, there's uh, there's it's just there's uh, so much great information in a book like this. So many great clues to colonial life, especially since we kind of see them through the eyes of somebody who wasn't living there day to day. So he sees things out of the ordinary and he writes about them such a uh, a wonderful time when we get this first snow of the year and it makes me immediately think what was uh, winter like in the colonies north america in the winter time in the 18th century uh, must have been an incredible uh, experience and adventure difficult and probably fun at times um, doesn't sound like I'd want to live in this house without shutters or any chinking in the walls or anything with a wind whistling through and no fireplace <sighs> well, let's hope the winter's short right <laughs> I want to thank you for coming along uh, on these little journeys through these books. These video or these uh, these books are always so uh, illuminating to read about. We we get to you know kind of get a uh, go back in history while we're reading them. Uh, well, maybe when we're outside like this, thinking about these things, and it really puts perspective into our life today. You know, I like to complain. I'm not a I'm not a a warm-blooded person. I'm cold all the time. You know, and winter time is difficult uh, for me. I like to dress up with lots of layers and and stay warm. And uh, I, I when I read books like this, I think, oh, boy, I got it way too easy. I should not complain. <laughs> Thank you for uh, all your amazing support on the channel here. Uh, you're sharing our videos, commenting. Uh, people support us on Patreon or go to our website. Uh, please, if you're interested in 18th century stuff, whether it's clothing or uh, camping goods or just a, a cup or a mug to remind you of how easy you've got it, head on over to our website. There's a link down in the description section. Thank you so much for all your support and thanks for watching.